click on demand scans, click start using scans. The idea here is that we've got a site profile and a scan profile, and we're going to create a library of sites and a library of scans. Um, and we'll go into each one. So, and, and also to say this, particular screen will only show up if you don't have any profiles currently created. So this is kind of a, a new user type wizard uh, so that uh, they know that they have to create one. Right. So new user comes in, they see this screen uh, and then we'll get to it in a second. If you're not a new user and you already have either uh, site and scan profiles, we'll show you what that, that experience looks like. So here we're yep. on a site profile. You can click new profile. Idea is you create a profile name. You type in this, uh, the type, whether it's a site or REST API. We'll fill that in and we'll do a website. You plug in your URL and then this would validate the URL. Um, sorry, so, so you, a few things, yeah, yeah, a few things to say. Camellia is designing to the basically the, the final version. Uh, so we're getting the, the full more or less experience here. Uh, the MVC is not going to have all of these features. Uh, for example, the site validation is not going to be there. You'll just plug in the profile name and the target site uh, because you won't be able to select REST API for the initial uh, on-demand scan uh, settings. Uh, so what you're seeing here is not everything that will be implemented in the initial uh, release of this. So that's what the, the, act, the actual issues will focus on what needs to be implemented and we'll show sort of crossed out versions of this so that you know what actually needs to be implemented and what doesn't. But the reason that we are doing this is because it's a lot easier to design to the end and then kind of pull stuff out of it than it is to start to stuff things in uh, from a smaller design. So uh, just be aware that everything in here is not necessarily what's getting implemented. So I can point that out as we go along. Yeah, exactly. And then one of the ideas too is if you look at what the end state is going to be, when we design our database tables or things of that sort, it may be easy to add those additional columns up front as opposed to coming back and adding them later. Um, but we'll be cutting this back in scope for 13.2 and 13.3 um, to exactly just the minimal that we need. So we've got the target site. We've got two types of validation here, uh, meta tag validation and text file validation. Meta tag validation, you're going to put this HTML on your website and then you're going to tell us where on your website that exists. So it would be example.com slash default slash mypage.html. And then to validate this, what we're gonna do is go to that web page that, uh, that the user gives us, look for this code. And if that code is there, then we will know that they uh, control that website and we're willing to run an authenticated or a active scan. If they don't want to- Sorry, Do you want questions as we go or at the end? Uh, we can, we can hand, take them as, as you go. The only thing I'm thinking about this is if you have different site profiles for the same site, you need to in, introduce the validation more than once differently, right? Yes. Yeah, that's a limit, um, at least initially, because every site profile has its own validation. That's correct. Cool. So the, the one thing I should say is, uh, and again, we've got site profiles. And then we have scan profiles and scan profiles are a different set of rules. So if you have one website, you might run 10 different scans. You might run a quick scan. You might run an extensive scan. You might run a, a weekly or monthly scan. Uh, as long as you validate that website, you only have to validate it once because it's going to be one site profile, but different scan profiles. Um, potentially, you know, if you have a website and a REST API, that would be two different sites that you would need to set up and have validation for. Uh, we've got text file validation, same concept. You're just going to stash this file on your uh, website and then we're going to look for that. When you click the validate now button, that should kick off a process to the server. The server should, you know, fire that up and validate the website. This has this idea of a draft. We're getting rid of this idea of a draft. So um, you can just save this information. 
you can save a site profile on a website. If you save it and it's not validated, that's fine. Uh, if we go to try to run a scan and it's not validated, we're just gonna return an error when we try to run that scan against a non-validated website. Uh, you can come back and edit this website or review it the website to uh, finish the verification uh, or validation. Um, I, I wonder if we should validate just at the start of a Dust scan, because if we validate here, then they could lose control of the domain tomorrow, but we still consider it valid. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And I think that's something we should uh, talk about in the issue. Um, so the idea here is that we do a point in time validation. We confirm that they have ownership and then that site is in the database is validated. And then we run the scans whenever we want, which is in direct co uh, conflict with what we're doing now, which the, kind of the validation that we have is uh, at the point of scan. Um, so I think there, it's something worth uh, discussing because I don't, I don't know what the right answer to that is. Right, yeah. I don't know that I know either. I know that uh, most of the DAS uh, commercial tools that I've used have not had, like uh, they've not validated every single time you run a scan. You you validate it once and then you can run scans against it. Uh, either that or it happens in the background and it doesn't take very long. So you just never notice it, which could be the case. Yeah. yeah. Maybe there's, maybe there's a period that it's good for, you know, there's a bunch of different options. I mean, either way, this is a great start. So, uh, so that's setting up a website. Let me see if there's anything. Okay. So here's um, rest API would give you the API specification. Um, and you've got author, uh, authentication in here and you can add, um, so this is not all. So the rest API should have the fields for rest API, which is going to be our override URL and then, uh, headers, uh, which are right. And, which I don't think is she didn't yet. focus on that. Yeah, she hasn't done that one yet because I told her to get the uh, um, at the profile library and a couple other screens done because we're not implementing REST API in the first release. Okay, perfect. Uh, but the yeah, the general idea here, right, is if you plug in REST API, um, all the dependent variables. If you have a REST API, this is where we would prompt prompt for them. So it would have the um, see if I can click to it. So the REST API has the specification for the, uh, uh, the API specification URL. And then we've got a couple other fields, I think, uh, to override a URL. Uh, those should show up here as well. Um, and then same thing for the, if we go back to the website. Oh, sorry. We should have uh, authentication and a couple of the other fields that are options for for websites. Um, let's go through scan profile. Uh, Again, uh, I think she didn't implement. Okay. Well, no, I've seen the scan profile. Um, I don't know why it's not going through the click through, but uh, there is a scan profile design, yep. um, but we're, that's also not going to be in 13.2. Uh, that should be in 13.3, uh, but I know that there is a design for it. How do I get out of the preview mode? Open it. Uh, um, let's see. It is somewhere in here. Which uh, Which page do we want to look at? Um, I would say that uh, we should look at, you know, we've only got a couple minutes left. Um, so basically, yeah, you create your site profile, and then you'd want to go to the actual page, the on-demand scan page. So here's on-demand scan. When the profile is created. Uh, yeah, that might be it. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah, so here's what your new, your uh, 
page would look like if you already have a scan and a site profile. So you come to it, you'd say new, new dash scan. You can select your scan profile. So um, your scan configuration and then your site, the site. So these are all the rules that you wanna run, uh, how long the timeout should be. This is your URL. Um, if you wanna make changes, you can click on manage profiles, which takes you to the other page to actually edit this data. Once you select this, what you should see is it's gonna do a preview for you. Um, so here's your scan profile. It's an active scan. It's a one minute timeout. Um, any of your settings, like don't use alpha rules, don't update add-ons, so on and so forth. Uh, this is just a read only view, just to confirm that this is the scan profile. You select your website and then it's gonna show you the website settings as well. So now you've got a whole uh, page of what you wanna scan. You click run this scan. And then it's going to kick And we will not be showing passwords in clear text like that. Right. Um, so once you click run the scan, it should kick off this process. Um, and then you'll see kind of this um, tailored pipeline view. In the back end, is it still running a normal CI job? Yeah, so, uh, and this is, Phil could probably talk a little bit more. This is gonna kick off the on-demand scans the way um, that it's architected and that is running a, a CI job. Um, one of the things is if you look at um, the way that pipeline is created, we now have a new source, which is just a, a field on that pipeline and it's called on-demand scan or maybe on-demand dash scan. And so we can now, uh, or or for this screen, we'll be able to query the pipelines and say, give me all pipelines where the source is on demand DAST and just uh, list them out here. Um, and then potentially we could actually, if we wanted to exclude those from the traditional pipeline page. Any questions so, on this? Uh... I have, so two more thoughts came up, which is one is that it might be nice to be able to, instead of a website URL, it might be able, might be nice to select a review app uh, because that already comes with a URL. Yeah, so this is, um, that's one of the, I guess, the limitations or problems with the way this on-demand scans is set up is um, there's no way to feed a URL into it right now. Um, all of this is, you know, all of this data that you're seeing here is going to be persisted in our own database tables and we'll read and write to our own database tables. And other than the fact that this is creating a CI job behind the scenes, it's really not connected to the rest of your CI uh, process. Um, so if you have a review app that generates a URL, we're gonna need to figure out a way to pipe that in uh, somewhere when you're setting up the site configuration. So perhaps site configuration will have some type of value that gets, gets replaced or, or some way we can put in a dynamic URL. Yeah, I mean, right. maybe we can select an environment or something like that. And, and along those lines, yeah. the, related to that is how do we validate those domains, right? Because um, if you have a new URL for every review app, that's gonna be a new domain that we need to validate. Uh, so there's going to be some way that we need to uh, uh, prove that you have ownership of that without this manual process. Yeah. And, and that's something that eventually, um, you know, I want to use these profiles in the CICD jobs as well. And so that's absolutely something we need to figure out before we get to that point. Uh, just for the on-demand scans, I, I think that for the initial release, the review apps may not be necessary. I think it would be good to get there as a step between where we are and getting to the uh, full usage in the CICD pipeline jobs. Um, and then, you know, as far as validation is concerned, uh, I, I was hoping that we'd be able to say, hey, we know that these are review apps, so we don't have to validate them. Uh, you know, so we just have a selection on, on there that you can select uh, review apps for, for that, uh, uh, that profile. 
but yeah, we can get to that when we when we get to a later iteration of these. Yeah, sounds good. The other quick idea I had is that maybe we could actually start recording some metrics now that some of this is in GitLab.com, not in Dask. Yeah, so that's actually an issue. Um, that's actually one of the issues I think for 13.2 or 13.3 is some of the metrics. Uh, and uh, Cameron, that might be something that you can pick up um, because we do need to get a little bit more comfortable with, there's two ways of doing the metrics. There's the usage ping, um, which my understanding is that's a background job that collates data from the database, gets a summation and then sends that out to uh, one of the GitLab servers. So there's the usage ping, uh, that's pretty blunt. You know, you can just sum how many jobs or on-demand scans or whatever uh, went. And then there's also Snowplow, which is more event-based tracking. Um, and I think in that issue, there's a link to the implementation guide for that. And Snowplow allows you at a specific point in time, for example, a job kicks off, fire off an event to um, the GitLab server, and then we can start tracking data that way. Uh, and that you can do both client side and server side. So you can do different types of uh, uh, telemetry that way. All right, well, we are past time now. Um, I, can, I can go through the issues once Neil and Seth and I meet to really clean up, uh, make sure that we know that we have it down exactly what we're doing. Uh, then I can record an, a video to send out to everybody walking through the issues just to make it clear what we're doing in each milestone uh, so that we don't uh, try to jump the gun on anything. And then if anybody has any specific feedback about, hey, yeah, we could do these few things together, uh, might make it quicker or something like that, then we can work through that. But after we clean those up, then I'll send out a video walking through all of those uh, issues specifically.